Our world is changing. Urbanisation is a long-term trend that means, by the time we reach 2030, when UN forecasts predict a world population of 8.5 billion, 75% of us will live in cities. But not all cities will be equal. There'll be winners and losers around the world as our cities compete for our attention and our investment. The winners will become recognised as global cities. The key thing today is that cities are probably more important than countries. If you think about the global economy, the London economy probably matters more than the UK economy because the economic growth that you generate from a city is far stronger than that that you generate from a country. The number of jobs created in London with such a diverse economy is so much greater. Certain sub-markets in London, particularly around the tech sector and where that very nascent sector 15 years ago was looking to locate. Now one of the interesting things about it, which is, is so important in global cities, is that infrastructure. So it's that ability to move people and to move goods and to move information. If we look at Silicon Roundabout, which is just north of the city in London, that has become extremely attractive to technology, media and telecommunications business. So much so that it's now actually quite an established market. It all helps sort of cement the area and provide a, a new economy to what was actually 15 years ago quite a rundown part of London. Global cities will dominate the focus of both business and the individual. They are diverse economies with inherent advantages that give owners of real estate strong pricing power. The cities that we look at in our Global Cities Index are the places that people want to live in, they want to work in and they want to play in as well. So the offering of these cities is something that people find compelling. We're looking for a global city that will be very strong economically. We have to have the infrastructure side. We need the infrastructure spend on ports, on airports and tube stations. We want a very strong urban planning regime as well, which will help limit the amount of space. So as a landlord, you can constantly charge a higher rent. And then of course, we want the world-class universities. We need that innovation for the new industries that no one knows about today that we're gonna be using in 10 or 15 years. So there's a number of factors that we look for and all of those with the right balance will give us very strong economic growth. People will earn more money, corporations can pay more rent, whether you're a retailer selling clothes, selling coffee or working in the financial sector. A city that we think is very, very strong and very compelling is LA. Myth about Los Angeles is that there is subject to urban sprawl, but in actual fact it's surrounded by national parks. To the west it obviously has the ocean. It is almost impossible to increase the level of supply within the city due to height regulation. And in addition to that, it has the infrastructure that moves people, it moves goods, and it moves data across the city, which obviously helps provide good long-term sustainable growth and ultimately makes it a place that people want to be. The key to identifying the global cities of today and tomorrow lies in access to key data. And in the modern era, we have more tools available for data analysis than ever before. And this ability to access information is growing all the time. We have a huge amount of data available to us, whether it's GDP forecasts, tourism sales. We also have a different type of data, which is the electronic pulses from people's phones can help us understand where people want to be 24 hours a day. And that's quite an interesting thing that you don't normally associate with real estate analysis. We can actually go and look at the portfolios owned by companies and we can assess whether they are in the real centre of a city. I think the demographics are important. If you look at any of the cities within our sort of top 20 of our, of our ranking database, if you look at Singapore, London, Hong Kong, all these places are highly cosmopolitan, but the fact that they're cosmopolitan is a function of the fact that people are attracted to them. We're seeing this urbanisation trend evolve and increase in terms of what people want to do, particularly in the millennial generation. They want to live downtown, they want to be close to the shops, to the restaurants. The idea of moving out into the suburbs is becoming less and less attractive. For the older generation, it's very clear that actually living in the city centre, near doctors, near theatres, near restaurants, restaurants is a lot easier than being out in the countryside. So again, there are multiple drivers, a young demographic as well as an old demographic. The global cities are those where life is lived to the fullest, where people live and work and play 24 hours a day. 
They are the powerhouses of the present and of the future. The reason these cities offer investment opportunities is because the companies that we ultimately invest in have extremely strong footholds in the markets in question and in specific markets that we like, in specific cities that we like. Looking forward, it is very clear to us that there is one type of city that will dominate the economic growth. And as a real estate investor, you have to be where there is economic growth because then you have pricing power.